In the last 14 years, I've sold hundreds of homes all over the city. And while you really get frustrated with market reports, they talk about the average sale prices of the homes going up in value. You see, it may only mean that people are either buying more expensive homes or the fact that five mega houses sold last month and increased the market average or the statistic. That's why I created this special report where I talk about the average sales price per square foot to see if the average sales price per square foot goes up in value. That means people are paying more for houses. Secondly, I like to look at the inventory supply, meaning I like to look at how many homes are available now in different areas versus what sold last month. If you're a buyer, it'd be great to know that if there's two times more homes available than sold last month, then you're in a great position to negotiate your best price. Secondly, if you notice as a seller that there's half as many homes available now as sold last month, well, you might be in a good position to get a great price. To help make our stats a little bit more relevant to you, I'm going to divide up the city into different quadrants. We're going to do the inner city, the northwest section, the southwest. And what we're talking is west of Sarcy, because we would consider anything east of Sarcy to be inner city. The deep south, which would be Fish Creek, um, Chaparral, Mahogany, all of these south areas. And lastly, we'll do the northeast. At the end of the video, we'll go over the whole market so you can compare how your numbers match up with the overall. So in our inner city, we had 281 sold listings uh, for res single family residential homes. And you can see they sold on an average of 36 days. The average price per square foot was 498. And the median where most buyers were buying was 465. Our average sale price was, was 773 and we had a big sale here of about 3.8 million. Now if you want to look at uh, how that compared to June, June was a higher month uh, so the, the summer month slowed down a little bit and uh, we can see here that the price per square foot is relatively the same and uh, we had a 3.5 million dollar sale which might have increased our average sale price for, uh, for the month of uh, uh, July and uh, we had 322 sales. Now, how we compare that to July of last year? July of last year, we actually had 345. So we actually had a busier year last year um, than this year. Having said that, the price was actually better, but probably as a result of this high sale here. But um, this high sale would increase the average sale price, but the median price, which is the, where most buyers are buying, was 433 last year. And the median this this year was 465. So our market is up. Also, days on market on median and um, and uh, the average are almost the same as they were last year. Now, when we compare to um, what's going on as far as our August supply of inventory, what we have available, we have a lot of uh, inventory available. We have over two months supply. That means that in response to the hot market that we've had, we now have a decrease in sales. And we have an, in people of, uh, an increased amount of listings coming on the market. And, of course, uh, they're not selling as quickly. So people, uh, a lot of people are a little bit late putting their homes on the market now. We can see that there's a lot of listings priced over the million-dollar mark and that the buyers were really looking to buy property somewhere between 689 and 790 But the, the sellers have put a lot of homes on the market that are 839 to a little bit over a million. And they're pricing those homes, um, you know, 557 a square foot. And uh, where the buyers were looking was right about here, uh, even priced at about 508. So the median group, there's a large group at 839 that have got their homes priced, you know, reasonably per square foot, but they're a little bit higher than where people qualified for. Now we look at um, the inner city inventory uh, and we look at it from this point of view and where we've got oversupply. You know, really down here from 400 to 450, there's nothing available. We had 21 sales and we have 21 uh, currently available, which means that uh, it's going to be pretty fast market. And 450 to 500, you know, we sold more than we have available. Uh, 500 to 550, we sold more than we have available. This is a pretty close race up to 600,000. But then we've got, you know, we've got in these higher groups, we've got, um, you know, more supply as we go up. And when you start to look at, you know, these higher groups, you know, we've got more than two times available here, um, more than, you know, almost three times available here. And, of course, the over 1.5 million, we got 135 listings in the inner city and 15 sold last month. So 
um, this area is not a really hot group to uh, to, to be selling in. Uh, so that that gives you the, the the rundown on the inner city. So now we'll move on to the northwest section. Now looking at our northwest, we had 411 sold listings in July, and those listings were on average, they were about $319 a square foot. Now the median where most of the buyers were buying was $301, and um, the list price was on average was $520, and the median asking price was $489. Now when we look at how that compared to June, the, last, the previous month, 442 sales, so a little bit higher than than July was, and uh, the average price per square foot in um, July was 327, and the median was 307. So the prices were a little bit better in June as well. Uh, so that means that maybe some people that were left on the market are um, are currently um, not going to get as much for their houses in in July. So uh, that was the hot market was June. So when we look at how that compared to last year, last year we had 429 sales in uh, in July, and uh, those were priced at 290. So we're definitely up from last year when we were there. Um, as far as days on market, you know, the days on market, 35 days, very similar. Um, uh, you know, some homes are selling an average of about a month, and and the homes that are in the hot part of the market is selling in 23 days, where this 1,600 square feet and 489. Uh, so the 1,600 square foot homes in the northwest are selling pretty quickly. And then when we go above that, I would assume it's not quite as good. Now we look at uh, our inventory supply. We can see that we have 708 listings overall that are active. And they're priced at about 344 a square foot. Um, and where the buyers were looking to buy is somewhere between 304 and 324. And they were looking at homes from 489 to 520. The current the homes that are left on the market are 539 to 602. It's a little bit higher price group, and they were they're currently a larger square footage home. And and we want to look at this from a you know a sector supply. This this group these groups all the way up to 450 are really really hot. Like we sold more houses last month than we currently have available. That means it's a, still a very strong market for anybody who's got a $450,000 house and it's very competitive. Also, I would say that you know 101 current listings to 72, 450 to 500 is pretty good, and this is really tight here at up to 550. But then when we go above that, the race starts to change. So anybody's got a home at 556, you can expect a little bit longer sales cycle. And of course, you know when we've got you know in a 700 to 750 range. We've got 10 available, 10 sold homes last month and 31 available. You can well guess that the, the market, you know, there's lots of supply for buyers. But down in these lower price ranges, there's there's really not much to buy uh, for buyers, and it's a very hot market there still. Of course, up in this higher range, you know, there was no sales. And uh, we've got seven available listings over 1.5 million. And here we've got six and no sales. So so these higher end prices are, are really not moving that much. It's the lower end stuff that's really um, causing the market to be a, a quite a hot market. Now we're going to move to the uh, southwest section. We're talking west of Sarcy, Aspen, these areas, um, Signal Hill, and so forth. Now in this southwest section, we had 91 sold listings, and those listings were all um, on average. They were asking around between 749 and 8. 96 and they were successful in getting 368 a square foot or 878 you know 878,000 so we can say that how that compares to last month well we had 111 sold last month and uh, so uh, most sectors are looking to me like there's not as many sales as there was in June so 366 was our average sale price per square foot in June and it and it went up a little bit for um, for July and the pricing we're looking at the pricing they also bought more expensive homes as well looks to me here and when you consider that last month it was 335 was where most buyers were buying it's now gone up to 346 for for July and the price point is very close to similar from one month to the next now when we compare that to last year you know in July we actually had more sales last year than we did this year 110 sold listings and those were priced at 322 a square foot on average and 308 was the median where most buyers were buying as opposed to currently 346 so the prices are really really up from where they were last year
also uh, the size of the homes were also just about the same days on market very very similar days on market except for the median group which we let's just say that that's that group we're talking about that heavy weighted group up to about 550 selling in 25 days now we look at how much we have available uh, 256 available listings that means a lot of people have put their home on the market since they thought the market was really good and we have 91 sold last month so we have you know two and a half months supply here and where that supply is is of course much higher than than what where the buyers were looking the buyers were looking around 749 to 896 and the and then you know we've got most of our inventory available 942 to over a million and of course the price per square foot doesn't match up at all the median group 391 is where the median group is and even the asking prices were 375 last month so there's a lot of people that have thrown their houses up for sale on the higher end group and um, and the, the buyers I don't know if the buyers are really there now when we look at this from the point of view of an inventory supply in eight different price groups you know we can see that uh, of course there's not much down on the bottom here because anything anytime something comes up for sale it's gone uh, up to 550 um, nine sales um, nine sales there and it's only three available and so we've got a lot of activity up to looks to me like up to about eight hundred thousand that is where all the activity is and then we've got an oversupply situation on areas above that and you know we've, we've got a couple of areas here where you know a million to 1.1 we've got three available and, and three sold um, and just in that one one million to 1.1 but like I say, all those other areas we really have an oversupply, and especially over 1.5 in that southwest section that we're talking about, uh, Aspen and those areas. And we're seeing that we've got tenants, 10 sales, and 53 available. And so that means that there's five times the homes available. So a little bit tougher on that higher end. And now we'll move to the deep south: Evergreen, Silverado, Cranston, Mackenzie Town, all these south areas. Moving on to the deep south section at 453 sold listings in July. Wow, that's a really high month. And when you think about it, uh, 300, they were selling between 285 and 302. And when you compare that to last month, I guess 529 sales, so it's definitely down from June. And the sales prices were 308 a square foot last month, so a little bit higher. And the meeting group was about the same where most of the buyers were really at. Square footages are very, very similar. So the buyers and the pricing is really, really similar. So in July uh, of last year, we had 436 sales in um, down there in that deep south area. And um, we had 283 a square foot was our average price in 264. So the prices are definitely up from where they were last year. When we look at our inventory supply. We can see that we had 713 listings, like about two months, a little bit under two months supply. So the market's probably not going to be pretty good down there. Um, but the let's look at the prices. The the asking prices are 539 to 612 on average, but the buyers are really looking for properties between 469 and 511. So that tells you that a lot of these listings on average are the higher priced group, and so that's going to be a little bit more difficult for uh, for people. Now, when we look at from an inventory supply point of view, you can really see where the hot part of the market is, and it's going all the way up to, let's say, 550. So 550, because 62 to 81, that's pretty hot still. Uh, of course, anything that's uh, under 500 is going to sell in a heartbeat, and so would anything up to 450. Uh, but these other groups going above that, there's an oversupply in each category. And especially, you know, with with you know, there we had a couple of uh, we had a couple of sales that were 1.2 to 1.3, but above that, there's no sales and there's inventory. So that tells you if there's, you know, the ultra high end is is a really difficult project to sell. And next, we'll look at the northeast section of the city. Now we look at our northeast section, 308 sold listings, and. Um, we had uh, the average sale price per square foot was 2.99. Our average sales were where most buyers were buying is 3.62, and the this is 3.70. We've got as an average price. Now, when we look at how that compares to last month, 
uh, in June 309 very very close so it means people are really non-observant of their of the season they're they're not leaving and going away they're continuing to buy uh, but the prices were a little bit better um, last month 305 was their median price and 310 was the average now when we look at uh, how that compares to last year 276 sold listings in July and there was an average of 266 a square foot so uh, let's look at our inventory here 308 listings sold and 531 active with a little bit not even two months supply up there um, the pricing is priced at 319 to 320 a square foot and the, where the buyers are looking is 295 to 299 so we've got some more expensive um, properties left on the market and the square footage is the same it looks to me like people are really just raising the prices on the, the same square footage is the same on average and so people are raising their prices a little bit um, and you know that may not really work very well the average where buyers were looking at was 379 uh, pardon me, 369 to 379 to 77, and where the list prices are 379, which isn't so bad, um, but they've raised it to a level that uh, 319 to 320 a square foot on average. They've raised their prices up there, and you know we'll have to see if they actually get those prices. Now, when we look at our inventory supply, you can see that up until 350, there is a real lack of supply, and then we've got at 350 to 400 we've got an increased supply there and uh, then of course above that and there's really not a lot of high-end sales that happen um, you know they're they're like hen's teeth up there so um, and this group up to 450 is still pretty strong so I would say that the market's pretty good up there still but anything that's over um, over 500 or just under the 550 450 to 500 is still a tough sale and then uh, up going above that is not so easy when you look at our overall market here that the real estate board reports, you can see that our average sale price at 472, uh, which is down from last month. This is not a real meaningful number because it just might mean that people are buying less expensive homes or more expensive homes. So it doesn't mean that your prices have actually gone up. So I never, I don't never really look at this number too closely. What I like to look at is the total number of listings that we have and how that compared to last year, and just that structure. So we had, we've got currently about 9,000 listings on the market, um, unchanged from June. And of course, but the sales, as we all saw in most sectors, are down in each area uh, for July. So this is probably going to be, this 9,000 listing is probably going to be our high for the year for as number of listings that we have on the market. And if we compare that to where it was last year, uh, we had about 8,600 in inventories. We have more than we had last year. We also have more sales, so we had about 3,300 sales uh, in July and less than uh, in June where we had 3,700 sales and of course 4,000 sales in May, which is the really big one for most people to put their homes on the market. And uh, that's definitely up from last year um, where, um, you know, like I said, we had uh, 3,100 sold and uh, this year we got about 200 more sales in the month. So, so overall the market uh, is pretty good but it's uh, slowing down a little bit from the first uh, half of the year. By now, you're probably interested in more specific information on the neighborhoods you're looking to buy or sell in. And I know your neighborhood. Give me a call. Back when I started selling real estate, over 90% of the homes I sold were expired listings or homes that other agents couldn't sell. During that time, I learned from my clients the many frustrations that they had selling their homes. Yeah, we had the home about, oh, Twice, twice with some other agencies you know and they couldn't sell the house we don't know why it's a beautiful house there was not any interest shown at all in our home by anybody that came and viewed it <clears throat> too many of the other mls realtors who'd come and show the house they wouldn't have a clue uh, we didn't get any uh, feedback on our showing last time all house was in the market uh, about three months and we never got any offers it's for these reasons I have a very detailed approach on the way I sell my clients' homes. But here's what my clients had to say. We had our house on the market last year for about six months, right Bruce? Correct. And um, we, it's, it's a high-end house. It's across the street from the park. It was listed at $1,299,000. And we just really didn't get any offers or any traction on the house. And we couldn't figure out why. Our realtor was really good, really nice guy. but. Uh, we were asking him for more of a marketing plan for the house and 
it just didn't seem to come. So in August, we took the house off the market and we decided to relist the house in January. January, yeah. And um, at that point in time, I remember seeing a brochure that Trent had done up. And that brochure from his company explained how he used video from a marketing perspective and all these other marketing techniques to actually move your house on the market. And we were really impressed with it. So we gave him a call and Trent came in. And uh, after we had a short conversation with him, we interviewed three other realtors, by the way, and none of them had the marketing strategy that Trent had. So Bruce and I decided, okay, let's take a chance with Trent for 90 days, see what happens. We listed it for the same amount of money, 1299000 And um, luckily, within 36 hours, <laughs> Amazing, actually. Our house sold at uh, $1,250,000, and we were really happy. Um, and uh, when we were interviewing the buyers, uh, they actually shared with us that they saw our house on the market last year, and they looked at the photographs that were on the MLS, but it didn't really tweak their interest, so they just passed it by. They didn't come up to see the house, and they don't live far away. They're only a few blocks away, but... Nevertheless, they turned it down. And then when they saw Trent's video, they were really excited and they said, we got to have a look at this house. And they came up and they were the ones who made the offer and bought the house. So we're really happy for both um, Claudia and her husband and for us to have moved this house so quickly. So thank you, Trent. Job well done, very professional. We had our home listed for four months in the fall and uh, it just didn't sell. Uh, we had a little interest at first, but then it just died down. Uh, after the new year, we got some information in the mail from Trent, and he was able to show us a, uh, the advantages of video marketing, and he uh, showed off our home to its best advantage. Uh, you know, it's not a show home, it's not a new home, it's, but it's a comfortable home. And uh, he was able to show that and get that information out to lots of people. <laughs> and uh, we had so many showings. We had you know one or two showings a day. Some days we had so many showings we weren't even able to come home for meals. There was that much interest in our home. Uh, another thing Trent was uh, able to show us was that the market was actually good in November when we had our home listed before and um, that was when there was no interest shown in ours uh, and there were homes selling in this neighborhood for actually less than for what than what we got for ours just this past week uh, we sold it in about four weeks with Trent and uh, we're really excited to be uh, in the week yeah we got a price that we're happy with and uh, Moving on. This is just two examples, but in 13 years of marketing homes, I've got hundreds of examples of turnaround situations. High and low end homes, fixer uppers, show homes, I've marketed a home just like yours. So call me today for a low pressure interview to discuss the sale of your home.